Hey everybody, how are you doing today? This is Tristan Eamon with Mindful Living Realty and we're at Tristan and his whiteboard live. So here's what's going on today. Uh, first of all, I got some cars and they're cool. I like them. Second of all, I attended a workshop this weekend and we talked about how to get your meditation practice up and running. I had started a meditation practice about two years ago where I was really consistent with it and I had a friend that would, that noted it about a year later says, hey, you're more centered, you're more, you just seem to be more there. Um, and I've kind of fallen off the log lately and I've noticed that. And so we're gonna work on getting that back on back, back going. Uh, but I also thought what I'd do today is say, talk about how I have developed my meditation practice and hopefully that would be something that would be ho ho helpful for you and uh, help you get into the position where you can do something like that. Now, when I say meditation practice, it can be anything you want it to be, really. Um, it doesn't have to be meditation. It can be just a time when you can have for yourself to slow down, get in, get, get in touch with you are who you are inside, and listen. Basically, that's all it is. It's, it's a time to be present and listen to yourself. So we get so busy running around day to day, day to doing this, doing that, taking kids there, doing the kids there, that we forget to stop, take a breath, and just listen and, and hear what we have to say to ourselves. Uh, a lot of what has happened here with Mindful Living Realty, uh, the things that we have established, that we have done, have come from those aha moments that I've got in, our, in, the, in the time that I've had, I've had meditation practice. So uh, first of all, let's talk about the different components that I've used in the uh, meditation. Uh, and this isn't just, uh, typically, we do the, I try to do this in the morning. Uh, I'm not a great morning person, so you know uh, sometimes it doesn't happen until uh, after like this morning, I had breakfast this morning with a bunch of guys, and then I came to the office and I had, and I did some meditation. So it, work it out on your schedule. Uh, we're fortunate that our children are old enough; they get themselves up and out of bed and off to school, and we don't have to deal with that. Um, but certainly, you can just find a moment during your day where you can even take five minutes for yourself and and, li and listen and, and find out what you can do. But uh, th here's what I do. First of all, um, I spend a little bit of time. Acknowledging the body, doing a little exercise. Uh, every day that's a little different. When it's spring and summer and nice outside, Sarah and I usually go for a walk around the neighborhood. Um, that's awesome, we love to do that. Um, when it's cold, we do have a uh, elliptical that sometimes we will run on it for a few minutes. But even if it's just a matter of getting up, doing some stretching, acknowledging that the body is there, allowing the energy to just kind of flow through, getting up in the morning and uh, you know just, just kind of get th getting things working again. Uh, acknowledging, like I said, acknowledging the body is there. Uh, second of all, um, is when I do some actual meditation. So let's talk first of all here about what meditation is not. Because sometimes we get ideas in our heads that are put there from lots of other things where uh, we've got to have to be in a sitting in a cross, uh, cross legs stance with our fingers on a certain way and saying ma's and moves and all that kind of stuff. Meditation simply, in my, in my opinion anyway, Meditation is simply a spot where you can get quiet and listen to yourself. Now, you're going to have times when the mind's going to wander. Be okay with that. Be okay with it coming in and you're going back and back and forth. Understand that's just the way it's going to be. The mind's just chattering away, chattering away. Understand that you're not going to be perfectly, uh, you know, mind mind free. Or your mind's not going to be completely free of thought during this process. It's a continual back and forth. And just be okay with the, with the thoughts passing your head and going out the other side. Some things I've done to help with this is when you go back to your breath and you come straight into your breathing, that helps you be present. One thing that I've found that works really well is I listen. If you ever sat in quiet and listened, and you can hear the, the humming of the refrigerator, the, the ticking of the clock, just listening to all those the sounds of your environment, and it really helps you just kind of hone in and, and be present at that moment and just listen intently. And that really helps you to kind of really be in the moment and 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 then and then you can move forward from there to just allow yourself to, to allow yourself to be. Um, third part of this is gratitude, and this is when you st spend a few minutes and you're thankful for whatever it is you're thankful for that day. I try not to be boring with it. You know, I don't want to just get up and say, "Oh, thank you for health, wealth, and prosperity." Amen, hallelujah. I, I want to sit there and say, "Okay, today, what?" What strikes me today as being really, really thankful? Sometimes, you know, I'm thankful that the sun is shining in the window. I'm thankful for this blanket that I've got over top of me. 
Um, you know, I had a good experience uh, um, with with the kids yesterday, and I, I'm, I'm you know I'm thankful for my kids. They're cool. Uh, those kind of things. Think about what really you're grateful for. And the good the key about this is is when you're thinking about the things that you have, you're not focusing on the things that you don't you don't have. The more you think about the things that you have, the more those things are going to flow into your experience. Uh, and the fourth thing, which actually ties into the gratitude, because I usually you do my gratitude exercises while I'm journaling, while I'm t writing. Um, this is uh, something that you can do at your own, however you like to do it. Now, if you are not a writer and you say, I just, I just can't do it, do it good, works good for you. Color, draw, um, you've got a phone, speaking to it. Do something to get your words out, to get your feelings out. And it's important, I think, to write it down. Writing allows you to... It puts, it puts the physical in touch with the mind and it gives you space because your, your mind will talk faster than you can write. So it allows for that break in, the break in, your, in, your, in time for that gap to happen. So you can listen to your stuff, you can listen to your heart. And it's amazing as you're writing, sometimes you realize that you're writing stuff you, you didn't even realize you believed or your thought or anything like that. So next thing you know, you've got this little aha moment just, just from sitting there and writing. It, it's amazing how that works. Uh, sometimes it's great to let out your anger or your frustrations on your on the paper when you're journaling. Uh, and if you need to be ceremonial about it, you can rip that page out and, and burn it. it. Makes you feel like you know, I've gotten that off and now I'm letting it go. Uh, if that's the way you need to, to, to if, that, if that's the way that works for you, great, do it that way. But some people like to draw, some people like to scribble, whatever it takes to get you in the moment and think about where you are and, and just let, you, let your words flow. So in, in the journaling practice, some of the things that I've kind of come up with is because you sit there and you look at your blank piece of paper and you go, okay, I got this paper here, now, now what? And you sit there and you wait and, and nothing starts flowing. Oh, I'm just supposed to write, so you just start, no, nothing happens. So I've, I've established for myself, which I used even today, some, some headings that allow me to focus my journaling on, on a specific topic. And I try to make that very present. So for the first for uh, for the first step, I wrote, "I am happy today because," and that's the gratitude piece. I usually write five or six different things that I'm, I'm happy for. Next part: What is your purpose today? And that is going to be waking up and deciding, okay, what do I feel like today? What do I feel like I am to do today? And if that scares you, the purpose idea, just kind of let that one go. You use whatever ones you feel good here about. You know, who are you today? You know, what, what do you feel like you are today? I mean, do you feel great? Do you feel strong? Do you feel confident? Maybe you need to write some affirmations down to encourage yourself to be that confident person that you want to be. What will you create today? And this can be, I want to create happiness. I want to create peace. I want to create fun in the workplace. And then you can move on to even be, oh, I want to create sales or I want to create money or I want to create deals. Something to that effect. You can use whatever you feel at that moment to create something today. Now we'll get into the bigger picture later on, but think about today. What do I want to create today? And on top of that, you can say, well, what are your goals today? And I like to use action steps in those goals. So today I might have had, I have had three things I wanted to get done, this being one of them. So when I got those three things done, I can say, yep, I did what I wanted to do today. If I did more things, great. If not, I've accomplished something and I can look back and say, you know what? I accomplished my goals today. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you did something. Because sometimes we're running around all day long, answering emails, doing this, doing that, and the other, and we feel like we haven't accomplished anything. By writing your goals down at the beginning of the day, you really feel like you've accomplished something that day, and you can kind of say, "Yep, I did what I took. I did what I needed to do today. We'll, we'll tack more tomorrow." And then finally, I write the heading: "What do I need to know today? What do I need to to do today?" And that's where I kind of don't judge and just write. And if something comes to me, I just start writing it. And believe and trust that that which is coming to you is something that's really from you that you need to pay attention to. And that is where things kind of start flowing. Once you start getting the writing flowing, things just kind of start popping up and you start writing things and, and, and realizing things. It's really quite cool. Now, of course, if, if the writing isn't flowing, be done with it. Just put it aside. Try it again next time. Not a big deal. Don't be so. You don't need to be so uh, uptight about gotta make things happen. You know, just do what you can each and every day. And as you as you get this practice rolling, you'll find that it is smoother. 
You'll find you get more breakthroughs. You'll find that it just becomes easier and easier each and every day. Finally, at the end of this, what I like to do is I like to write my long-term goals. So if that's, you know, I want to sell X amount of homes this year, you know, that becomes kind of the last piece. So I kind of keep that, that long-term goal in front of my face as well. So I'm, I'm looking at the present and I'm also looking at the future, looking at what I want to accomplish and making sure that everything else is aligning with, with that as well. So, all right. Hopefully that was of interest to you guys and something you might have an interest in doing someday or some time. If you have any other ideas or some of the other thought forms that might work, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll go ahead and post these steps below to kind of give you a framework to begin with or to keep going with, or maybe it's an aha, aha moment for you to keep your practice alive. But I've found and I'm dedicated to keep to going back to my practice a little more steady now because I kind of dropped it here a little while ago and, and getting back on that curve. So um, we'll catch you next time at Tristan's Whiteboard. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.